Hello there, everyone. Before we get started, yes, my glasses are off because the ring light is catching it, so I hope you don't mind. My name is Phoenix, by the way. Every video that I make going from this day forward will have me opening the video. That way you all can see who I am. And as well, you know I'm using my real voice, as I've been accused of not doing so on, you know, another platform. Anyway, with that being said, sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm. It is time for your dose of vocal melatonin. And today's dose is entitled, True Creepy Encounters. Back when I was 13, I used to go to a park a couple blocks away from my house. This was an almost daily occasion. When I would go to the park, I always watched over the children there. There was a church park around the corner of the first park. There was also another park up the block and across the street at a school from this first park. This day, we had played at the first park for about an hour when I asked the kids if they wanted to go to the park around the corner, the church park, or up the block to the school park. They chose to go to the park up the block and across the street. So I gathered all the kids and we went to the school park. Once we got there, I sat on the swing set with my friend. We talked while the kids played on the equipment the kids played for about an hour when my friend noticed a man behind the fence on the far side of the park across the field. She pointed out to me that the man was doing something really weird. Turns out, he was behind the fence watching the children while touching himself. Disgusted and scared, but also being the oldest one there, I walked over to the field, keeping a safe distance of about 15 feet or so from the fence, to see if that's what was actually happening. She was right. He was touching himself. I then stupidly decided to yell at him to stop and leave. When he didn't leave or stop and actually started getting excited, I ran back to my friend and got her phone to call the police as mine was dead. I got on the phone with them, went outside the fence, and told him I was calling the police. He then approached me and tried to touch me with the same hand that was in his pants, all while smiling at me. The police picked up and I told them what was going on. As I'm doing so, the children that I was watching over decided it was a brilliant idea to come out of the park. They're all younger than me as well, ranging from 12 to as little as 4. They were saying things and antagonizing this man. I got really upset and was yelling at them to go back into the park. While still trying to tell the police what's happening, where we're at, description, etc. But the kids just weren't listening. There was one specific girl that he seemed to take an interest in though. She was 11 and her little sister was 8. He started to yell things at this little girl while laughing. I won't repeat these things as they are horrible and invokes CSA. I told them to go home, and thankfully, those two went home. But that didn't stop him from scaring the others. He started running at us and then running away before he reached us. He did that up and down the block for a couple of minutes, all while still laughing. He then tried to run away as I'm still on the phone. I told the other children to go back to the park because I had planned to follow him from at least a block behind. Why I thought me as a 13-year-old should have been doing that in the first place, regardless of if I was with someone, is just crazy. But, to be honest, I was just running off adrenaline and was more upset now than scared. He kept scaring the other kids. Unfortunately, those kids didn't listen when I told them to go back to the park. Instead, they started to follow after me. We made it about five to six blocks away from the school park. I had kind of lost him trying to keep my distance, but then when we seen a police car, me and my friend flagged the police car down. The police officer asked us what was wrong. I told them everything. I just told you all. 
They turned their lights on and went to the direction we pointed in. All of us children started to run after the police car to see what was going to happen. The police ended up catching up with the guy. He eventually attempted to break into someone's house. They caught him and arrested him immediately. After they put him in the car, they came up to me and asked me my name and what happened while writing it down. By this time, all the neighbors had come out to see what was going on. The parents also started to show up on the scene, mine included. My mom was with me while I was telling the police about the incident. Everyone went home after that. A few weeks go by and my mother received a call asking if I would testify in court. She declined and that was the only time we were asked. Soon, we seen an article in the Pioneer Press about the incident. Apparently, the man was on meth when this happened, which makes sense. He also had a prior incident when he was caught groping a 13-year-old's chest at another school in the area. That man is so vile and disgusting, and I'm just glad that all the kids I had to watch over went home safe. I feel so sorry for the other little girl who had to experience that, alone as well. He ended up going to jail. Unfortunately, it was only for five years, but at least he was off the street for a little while. I don't know if he's gone back to jail since then or what, but the whole thing is just crazy. I tried for like three hours this morning to find the article, but I haven't been able to. I will keep looking, and if I find it, I'll be sure to let you all know. This happened to me when I was a teenager, some years ago, but I still think about it sometimes. So, me and my four friends were on this one-hour bus ride to go to my parents' house to hang out. We were sitting and chatting in the back of the bus. The bus is empty except for us and this middle-aged man sitting a couple of seats away from us. He looked like a normal businessman on his way to work or something, wearing a suit and carrying a briefcase. After a while, we noticed he was behaving kind of in a weird way. He was chugging down beers rapidly which is not that common on this bus, and also it was in the middle of the day. He was also pretty openly flipping through a porno magazine and kind of muttering to himself. Okay, weird, but we didn't really get too bothered. After a while, he starts approaching us, sitting closer and small-talking with us a bit, asking how old we are, where we're headed, and so on. We kind of just reply politely, but try to end the conversation pretty quickly, since he's creeping us out. Apart from the beer drinking and porno magazine, you can really sense something is just wrong with this guy. He's grinding his teeth a lot, and has this blank stare like he's looking right through you. Not really there. When we stop talking to him after a while, he just sits there silently, and stares at us for a while, breathing very heavily, like he's getting more and more agitated. And after a minute or so, he suddenly leans forward and pulls down the sleeve of his shirt. On his arm, he has these big pair of sharp-looking scissors, duct taped to his arm with the sharp end pointing up towards his hand. He's stretching out his arm and making sure we all see the scissors and says, Does this make you respect me? Am I getting your respect now? We just sit there with our mouths open. I'm scared as shit, not really sure what to say or do, and panicking because I'm not sure what this guy is capable of. After a moment, he leans back again and continues staring at us, not saying anything more. And we don't say anything either. Afraid set him off, I guess. We got off at the next station, all jittery and full of adrenaline after that weird encounter. If I wasn't a clueless teenager, I would have called the police at that point. But we didn't. And I still think about it sometimes and wonder what a guy like that, who was 
obviously unhinged, is capable of. And if he ever did something worse than just scare some teenagers by acting crazy. Trigger warning for this next story because it contains sexual assault and violence. Listening discretion is advised. I was 20 at the time, but I lived with my very strict parents who still didn't approve of me having a boyfriend. I would meet up with my boyfriend at a nearby park because I couldn't invite him over and we had no money to really do anything. One day, as we're both sitting on a park bench, talking, my then boyfriend pointed to a guy and said something along the lines of, why is that man looking at you? Are you talking to other guys? To which I said, no, I don't even know him. I'm not sure why he's looking at me. That's creepy. And then he responds with, he wouldn't be looking at you if he didn't know you. The man looked to be middle-aged, Hispanic, disheveled, hair and clothing, thin build, maybe around 5'8". A few weeks later, we are at that same park, but this time it's night. We are sitting on a different bench kissing when my then boyfriend abruptly stops and says, what the fuck? I look immediately to where he's pointing, which is a bush. My then boyfriend says in a stern and obviously pissed off tone, what do you want? The man steps out from behind the bush and held up what I can describe as a peace sign with his palm facing himself with his mouth in the center of it. If you know what that means, then you are more informed than I was at that moment. I looked at him puzzled and frankly, really stupid. I asked shyly, um, did you want a lighter or something? But the man didn't say anything and just stuck his tongue out, still having his hand in the same position. I immediately figured out how wrong I got the situation. I finally said, dude, what the fuck? And that's when the man asked, Can I join you both? To which my then boyfriend yelled, Hell no, fuck off. The man then said, I I'm sorry, I thought I knew her. In a state of disgust and fear, the fear and disgust being both the presence and gestures from this man and my then boyfriend's earlier accusations that I was somehow screwing around with this homeless man, I said, I don't know you. And the man then said, I'm sorry, I, I thought you were my sister. My then boyfriend told the man he had a knife, which thankfully the man ran off and disappeared down the street in and out of the park. I then called the local police using the non-emergency number and made a report on the incident. I never saw that guy again. Later that night, my then boyfriend mentioned how just before he fully revealed himself, the man looked to be pleasuring himself while concealed by the bush. This is a memory of mine when I was about 10 years old. I was home alone with my little brother who was 7 years old at the time. We lived in a large house in a nice neighborhood. We are from Northern Eastern Europe. I want to say first that our parents were not home. It was pretty usual that sometimes we would be home alone until around midnight. And we enjoyed that we could be awake for so long. And in our own living area, I had never seen anything unusual or scammers. And after this encounter, I'm 22 years old today. I haven't seen anything like that. In my country, it's actually very odd to even see any scammers or people asking for money from strangers. Anyway, I remember it was a cold winter night, and when you look outside of the window, you could only see your reflection. It was that dark. We were chilling with my brother playing PlayStation, when suddenly I did hear that someone did come onto our front porch. I immediately just thought that it was our parents already coming home early, but no one tried to come in. After a couple of minutes, I got this weird feeling and went to check on the porch, 
through the kitchen window. I remember that there was a very old and ugly looking woman. She had a hunchback like the hunchback of Notre Dame. She was wearing an old type of balaclava around her head and she saw me looking. I started panicking because she didn't even knock on the door. She was just standing there. Suddenly, she started knocking and hitting the door and had to go open it, even though I didn't want to because we never locked our doors. As I said, usually anything never happens and you can just trust people here not to just walk into your home. And I was scared she would just barge right in. I was so scared, but I opened the door and she started to show me some papers with text saying something that she can't speak anything and she needs money for some surgery. She carried some old frames with her that she wanted to sell. I told her I don't have any money and my parents aren't home. As I said that, my heart dropped because now I realize she knows we are alone. She insisted money and showed those papers over and over. She got closer and I got a feeling that she was trying to get in. This happened sometime in January, and the only money I did have was a $100 bill my dad gave me on Christmas. I was so scared, I gave away my bill, the very one I asked my dad for. The woman smiled at me and left. I started crying when I checked the streets from our windows, and I didn't see any car which she would possibly have driven. She was walking around in negative 30 degree weather, I don't think so. I did run in every room in our house and lock the doors. When I started shutting window blinds around our house, I saw the woman in our backyard. I screamed and closed every window and called my parents. They came right away and they were furious because what kind of scammer is that ruthless and won't stop even after seeing children are scared? Police came and they later told us that neighborhood did see a van on the streets and they tried to find it, but they didn't. We did keep our doors locked after that and our parents rarely left us home alone for a long time. Before I get started, I would like to just apologize for the length of my story. But first, let's start with the context. In August, my boyfriend and I were struggling to carry a TV inside. Neighbor noticed and offered to help. Seemed like an odd guy, but not in a concerning way at that point. He would start conversations with us every time we were on our balcony, which just felt weird. He's 30 years older than me and lives in my apartment complex. Escalated to trying to talk to me every time he sees me on my balcony, glass door, even with the door shut. I often sit there, and this just weirds me out, but I usually just wave and stay inside. He'd stand out there for a minute or so just staring into my apartment, as if I would come outside and eventually would move on has told me he recognizes our cars and has made comments about damage he hadn't noticed before. I don't mind he noticed damage to my car, but why ask people you barely know? And why was he assuming, after a week of seeing my car, that he know the dents well? Again, it's just weird. I work at a dispensary, use MMI, and he's a regular customer. He knows I work there now, but I don't do transactions with him and avoided him at work before this. My co-workers say they've seen him out with young girls and he generally doesn't act like someone in their 50s. I know there's a lot of definitions of how a 50-year-old should act, but his behavior is quite juvenile. I live on the third floor, but the parking lot is level with the second floor and is angled in a way that headlights sometimes flash into our windows before driving off, depending on the spot. I have severe CPTSD, was diagnosed a month before this incident, and I'm concerned I'm overreacting as a result of my issues. I do have a therapist, but my attempts at coping mechanisms for this incident have failed so far. 
I had nightmares about this guy prior to this, and they were very similar to what happened. It creeps me out. All right, on to the main story. In January, I had a really creepy interaction with my neighbor, and despite being told by several people that I have ample reason to fear this guy, I still feel like I'm being unreasonable. I was alone in my apartment. My boyfriend had been out of town a lot and was working a lot, and I think the neighbor noticed his car was missing. I don't know if he saw this as an opportunity to talk to me or what, but he had been trying to interact with me from my balcony a lot when my boyfriend wasn't home. I had been home from work for about 20 to 30 minutes. I hear knocking on the door, leave it alone since I never answer unless I know someone's coming over. I'm 21, I'm a female, and I'm disabled, and I don't feel safe opening the door for random people when I'm unable to physically protect myself. He stood there for at least five minutes, repeatedly knocking and yelling. It's redacted. And other things I didn't hear well. I was watching TV, and I had my laptop out with the time, so this isn't an exaggeration. He stood there knocking for at least five minutes. I didn't check the time until it seemed like he'd been knocking for too long, so it's likely a few minutes longer than that. I checked the door at one point to see who it was because I was pissed off at the knocking and got curious, but otherwise I was not willing to open that damn door and stayed silent, other than my TV since it was already on. The knocking stops eventually, and I thought that was the end of it. But a few minutes later, he was in the parking lot with a fucking fishbowl, jumping up and down to get my attention screaming my name, saying, it's him. It was about 7 p.m. at this point. He had already seen me in my balcony window. So I walked outside feeling like I had no other choice and hoped to defuse the situation. He says, hey, I was knocking at your door, but you never answered. I started to get very uncomfortable and was a little bit intimidated. I just said, sorry, I uh, must have thought it was my cat. Then he said, well, I was just trying to see if you wanted to hang out or smoke and have a chat. I didn't mean to bother you if you don't want to. He was acting really weird, couldn't stay still, was looking around a lot. I can't describe the way he was moving. The closest comparison I can make is either someone on drugs or a small child who's anxious and can't stand still. I'm assuming he had drugs in his system, other than marijuana, or maybe he hadn't been taking meds he should be taking. Who knows? But I'm not about to get stoned and hang out with a 50-year-old man I barely know. I responded very uncomfortably. Sorry, I don't have anything to smoke with you. I just have my capsules. He said, I have some stuff we can smoke. It's fine. Um, no. I legally cannot do that. I have MMJ and cannot do that under state law. And breaks my company policy. And worst of all, breaks HIPAA. I'm not willing to lose my job over this guy. I wished I just said that looking back, but I didn't want him to know where I work, since I'd successfully avoided him up to this point. So I said, maybe in 30 minutes or so, I'm pretty busy right now. I know this wasn't the best response, but I was planning on letting him know I wouldn't be hanging out with him once he came back, so I was okay leaving it at that. I also hoped he'd realized he was being really weird. He left for around two and a half hours. In that time, I developed a migraine, started vomiting, and shit myself. Not his fault. This is a fairly common thing for me, but I couldn't deal with him and that crap. No pun intended. At around nine, I went to bed, turning off every single light, hoping he'd get the message 
that I was not going to be going out in any capacity. At around 9.45, right before our complex has quiet time at 10, he came back and even though I wasn't checking the time, he was clearly more persistent and despite not answering, continued to knock for what felt like a much longer time than before. He left right before curfew, but until then he was yelling pretty loudly for me to answer the door. It's just me, open up, it's redacted, etc. I had my door locked so I felt safe enough, but I was still scared. If I hadn't been having these health issues, I would have just sat through the door. Sorry, I can't smoke with you and leave it at that. But I was shitting myself with a migraine, vomiting while this man screamed at my door and I didn't want to deal with it. Once he stopped knocking, he went to his car, moved from a spot that you can't see my bedroom from to a spot directly in front of my bedroom window and started flashing his bright into my window and probably all the other neighbors. After that, I couldn't sleep. I was really scared. He was incredibly persistent to a concerning degree. I was too scared to go into the bathroom when I had to vomit because my blinds were open and I just wanted to disappear. I didn't want him to know what I was up to even if it was a health issue. So I just stayed in bed as long as I could. I eventually went to the bathroom, and when I came back to my room, he was staring right at me from his car. I don't think he was even smoking or anything. He seemed to just be sitting angrily. I just froze. Then eventually, I went back to bed. Since then, he stares into my apartment angrily, gives me strange looks when I see him at work, and parks in front of my apartment every single time there's a spot open. He used to park in the same spot religiously every single day that's not in view of my apartment. Until this incident, his actions all feel intentional, but I'm scared I'm overanalyzing the situation. I know that it is not normal behavior at all, but I feel like I'm assuming the worst when I don't need to. People have told me it's not my job to teach him how to behave like a regular person, and I know they're right, but I'm scared. I've blown this out of proportion and fear a neighbor that was in a poor attempt trying to be kind. I feel traumatized, but I also feel like I shouldn't feel that way. I'm scared he was genuinely trying to be kind in a shitty sort of way. And I feel like I'm being the asshole. Years ago, when I was pregnant, we were just getting ready to go to bed and it was late about 1.30 a.m. This woman knocked on the door and my husband answered. She was clearly high and jittery and looking around everywhere. She asked if she could use the toilet. My husband said no, that it is not a public restroom. We both got a really bad vibe from her. She was quite a big woman and clearly something wasn't right with her. She started to try and open our security door, rattling the handle, but we have always been very conscious of keeping it locked the minute we walk in. My husband told her to go away and he shut the door. She started to bang on the door, screaming that she needed to use the toilet. My husband opened the door again and told her to piss off or he was going to call the cops. She stopped, froze, and for about 20 seconds, stood there, staring at us, and then she turned around and walked away. We turned off all the lights and looked through the blinds and saw her next door talking to two people. I said to my husband that this was a setup for a home invasion, and he agreed. The thing was, I had actually seen this woman around before quite a few times, so she could have known that 
I was heavily pregnant and that would make us a good target because we would have been compliant. People have a tendency to be more compliant when they're trying to protect their family. I reckon she followed me home, but I never saw her again. I want to preface this by saying I almost completely forgot about this person and all of these events until I read a comment where someone had a similar encounter as me and it all came rushing back. Also, this is long and a lot of it is me giving contact so I'm sorry about that. I'm a 23 year old female and from the UK. From the ages of 9 to 11 I was best friends with this girl. We'll call her Sarah. She and I formed a little group at primary school with the two other girls we'll call Lauren and Ellen. But we were each other's best friend first as we lived so close. Sarah lived one street over from me so I would always sleep over at her house but she never came over to my house as we were very very poor and I was embarrassed about the state of the house. The sleepovers became a weekly thing, and it was just her and her mom who worked every weekend, so we spent a lot of time in that house alone. It started off odd. She would show me her mom's pornos from like the 80s that all included vampires. As a nine-year-old, I had no idea what was going on, and I'd just sit there blankly. She'd always say, doesn't it make you want to do it? And things like that. She would also get out her mom's sex toys and show them to me and make me hold them, which was really odd to me until I got older. But even at that time, I still felt uncomfortable. I was a pretty nervous child and I struggled to make friends, so I'd often go along with whatever she said just because I felt lucky to have a friend outside of school. She would often make up stories or do mildly creepy things at night like sing patty cake in a babyish voice close to my ear while I was sleeping or pretend her dolls were alive and wanted to punish me for taking her attention away from them which just creeped me out but never outright concerned me though my mom was worried that I was having constant nightmares. None of this affected me too much and so I stayed friends with her. Later that year I got mauled by a dog, a Japanese Akita to be exact, and had reconstructive surgery on my face. Due to this I had to take medicine at certain times and would be escorted to and from the school office every day by my other friend Laura. Because of this, we became best friends and I started sleeping over at hers instead of at Sarah's. Sarah didn't like that. I was getting a lot of attention due to my fresh scar or that I had replaced her with another friend. So she said she was pregnant at 10 years old complete with tears and plans and everything, including Ellen telling her mom at the end. This went on for months and as kids we didn't even question the validity of her claim. At some point she dropped this and next she pretended she had cancer. I called her out on that one as I know a lot because my auntie had it at the time, which she really didn't like. After that, she started calling me names, stealing my school stuff, made up lies about me, etc. Making our other two friends pick me or her. It fluctuated a lot, so sometimes they'd be my friends, other times they'd be hers. During this time, I slept over at Lauren's a lot and a lot of stuff went missing. A pink flip phone that I just got as my first phone ever. This was like 2010, mind you. And my DS Lite, which was my prized possession. My mom got involved at this point and demanded that they find it, as she knew I'd taken it to the sleepover. 
In the end, Lauren supposedly found them both smashed up on a road far from where either of us live and returned them to me completely broken weeks later. Later on, both Sarah and I got invited to the swimming baths for Lauren's birthday. And for once, we got along and it was like having my best friend back. Us kids were basically left alone in the pool to mess around for a few hours. An important note here is that I couldn't swim. I still can't. I had chicken pox during school swimming lessons and I'm terrified of water now, so I've not learned since. Anyway, at one point I was so sick of being stuck in the shallow end like a baby at the age of 11 when all of my friends were swimming in the deep end. Sarah noticed this and came over to me. She offered to piggyback me and swim to the deep end so I could play with everyone else. I was so happy to be included. I didn't even think about the fact she didn't regularly like me or that if she left me, I couldn't swim back. I just hopped right on and she swam us out. She started mock tipping sideways like she was going to drop me and I cried and begged her to take me back. I was terrified of getting water in my face or going underwater. I still can't go underwater to this day. She just laughed at me and dropped me, dunking me under the water and holding my head there where I struggled and couldn't breathe. I remember struggling and being unable to breathe. But the next thing I knew, a lifeguard had pulled me to the side of the pool and I was choking on air and shaking. I also have horrible reactions to the smell of chlorine and it makes me sneeze and my eyes swell so I had to be picked up but everyone told me it was an accident and just kids messing around. She later told me it really was a joke. I should learn to swim and stop being a baby, which I guess is true, but still, after that day, I didn't want to be around her anymore. Our friends still flip-flop between us, some days being her friend, other days being mine, but that was fine. I didn't care anymore. I was so sick of her. I avoided her like the plague. Primary school was almost over and I never had to see her again. Eventually, we all went to secondary school, ages 11 through 16, and we all went to the same one, but my school was categorized into classes, the top being the smartest, and I and Lauren, also Ellen, were all in the top class, and Sarah just wasn't. It was a nice buffer, and I got my best friends back, as well as making more friends for the first time ever. I completely forgot about her, in all honesty. Then, one day, as I walked home from school, I passed the corner shop on my way home, and she was there, blocking the path, waiting for me. Her school tie was tied around her head like a headband, and she was crying. I tried to go around her and she growled at me and launched herself at me. I was like 4'7", 80 pounds, if that, and she was much larger than me and I'd never been in a fight ever. I had no idea what to do to get her off of me until she clawed at my neck and alternated kneeing me and elbowing me. I just wanted her off of me. I grabbed the tie wrapped around her head and pulled as hard as I could until she fell to the ground. And with that, she just ran away crying. I remember walking the rest of the way home, so confused. What had I even done to her to deserve that? I hadn't even spoken to her in like eight months at that point, and she and our other friends were in the same tutor group, and they didn't mention anything to me. Eventually, I forgot about that. I turned 12 a couple of months later, and the day after my birthday, I walked into school, having spent all of my birthday money on new pens. I was excited to show off. I was a weird kid. First lesson of the day begins, and Ellen runs up to me and says, Sarah's brought a knife to school. She showed me in tutor. 
She said she brought it for you. I kind of laughed out loud at that, assuming it was a joke of some kind, since any sort of weapon brought into our school was grounds for immediate expulsion. And nobody was stupid enough to try that, especially at 12 years old. I think I even made a joke about it probably being a butter knife. She repeated that she was dead serious, that she told the teachers about it and they had called the police. Again, I didn't believe her. To me, it seemed crazy they would call the police over a 12-year-old bringing a knife to school, but they in fact did. The police arrived minutes later, and that was that. I never saw the knife, but she was immediately expelled. I don't know for sure why me or what she had planned to do, but she must have told multiple people she was going to do something to me because it was an ongoing joke the rest of the time I was at school. She ended up going to the school my little sister had just started at, and she apparently also told my sister it had been for me, but it was just a joke. Side note, my little sister is a year younger and is a fighter. At this age, I've still never been in a real fight, and my sister has always fought anyone who would badmouth me. She's a real good one. My sister punched her for that, and that was the last I heard from her until I was 18 years old. I turned 18 and was at university, and then out of the blue, I was tagged in an old primary school photo by Sarah, and had the whole class in it, but she tagged only me. I found this odd, but didn't do anything about it, and it was my old Facebook account anyway, so I ignored it. A couple of months later, it was Sarah's birthday, and she sent me a message asking if I could come to her birthday party. Mind you, I hadn't spoken to her in six years, and the last time I had, she'd fought me and then brought in a knife. I simply ignored the request and moved on with my life. Later, I saw that she and Lauren had connected and were best friends again, which always concerned me as Laura and I stayed friends for years and she knew everything about how Sarah had treated me. But I've never really put much thought into it other than that it's likely they were still friends the whole entire time and Lauren had stolen my DS and phone because of Sarah and they'd broken them together. The last time I saw her, I was 19. I was on a date with my boyfriend walking down the street, and I saw her standing at the bus stop. I wasn't really bothered since I'd neither seen or heard anything from her for years until our eyes met and she grinned and pulled out her phone and started filming me until I was out of sight. I have no idea why she did any of the things she did, but... I mostly feel sorry for her based on the way her life has turned out. But still, I hope I never, ever have to see her again. I do some volunteering at a hospital three times a week that involves me reporting to the hospital at 5 a.m., I enjoy the volunteering, I've been doing it for almost two years, and I've never had any issues until last week. Last week I was a bit early on one of my volunteering days, and I had about 30 minutes before I had to report in. I normally would have just waited in my car, but I had been pretty stressed about things in my personal life, so... I thought I'd go for a little walk to burn a little steam and clear my head. After all, this is in a pretty nice area, upscale West Los Angeles. So, what could go wrong? It's like 4.30 a.m., so naturally the streets are all quiet, but it seems pretty peaceful. But then, up ahead, I see somebody walking in my direction. Kinda odd, I guess, but... I didn't think too much about it. Him being out here at this hour isn't inherently suspicious. After all, does being out here at this hour automatically make me suspicious too? 
So I keep walking. We make eye contact when we cross paths, and I suddenly get a very bad feeling about that man. I can't explain it other than instant. Sometimes you just have a bad gut feeling about somebody, you know? That's what I felt when I passed this man, and I immediately went on high alert and made sure he wasn't going to approach me from behind or something. Very soon after walking by this man, I'm talking like 15 to 20 seconds, I passed by one of the many parked cars on the street. This is Los Angeles, so there's a lot of parked cars on the sides of Main Street. Except this parked car is different. There is a man sitting at the wheel, and the man waves at me and beckons me over. Again, pretty damn creepy, but not inherently worth freaking out over. But as I keep walking, I realize that while the car was parked, it wasn't off. It was simply in park. Because this car started driving in the same direction that I'm walking, and it drives at a pace essentially matching my walking speed. At this point, I've had enough of my brain is saying, nope. So I immediately turn around and start speed walking back in the direction that I came from. Then I saw something that, in the moment, scared the fuck out of me. The first man that I had encountered walking the other direction, which was now probably like 40 seconds ago, was now standing pretty close to me, like way, way closer than somebody who had been walking in the other direction should be. And then he makes eye contact with me. And then he starts walking in my direction. I am incredibly suspicious and more than a bit nervous at this point. So because it is pretty dark out, I decide to play a hunch. My car keys fold out in a manner very similar to a switchblade. So I immediately pulled it out, press the button to make the key fold out. And I stare at him for a second. I believe I was caught off guard because he stopped walking for a moment. Well, that second was all I needed. I immediately took off running at top speed across the street. We're talking Los Angeles Main Street, which is six lanes and a median divider, and kept running down the street. I'm no Olympian, but I was on the cross-country team at a D2 college. And I still run multiple times a week, so I'm pretty confident that I can outrun the average person I run into by a comfortable margin. Still, I didn't take any chances and ran all the way back to the hospital. So what do you guys think? I'm not crazy, right? I'm not necessarily saying that I was going to be the next prominent murder victim or kidnapping victim, but... There was definitely something going on, right? Here's a little background for this story. I am 18 and I live with my mother in an apartment in Montana. It's a two story apartment with four sections and only two garages, which means two sections have to share one garage. For the past three to four years, we've had a mute and deaf neighbor live next to us, and to be honest, he's kind of an asshole. Me and my mom didn't know why, but almost every week or so for the past few months, people have been staying at his apartment for about a week, then suddenly leaving. About three weeks ago, me and my mom decided that we should contact the landlord after this encounter. Three weeks ago, I was taking out the trash at around 8.45 p.m., and of course it's dark outside. My mom has security cameras panned in our driveway and, for some reason, has monitors inside our garage, which the live feed of those cameras goes off 24-7. That day, there was quite a bit of garbage, and living on the second floor, I had to take multiple trips. That day, the garage was getting picked up, so I had to put the cans in the street. 
While I took the first bag of garbage down, I noticed the garage door was open, but nobody was inside. I thought it was odd, but jogged it off to be one of the neighbors looking for something, but since it was dark outside and the garage lacked any light from inside, I couldn't see anything. After bringing down about two more garbage bags, the garage was still open, but I for sure heard somebody moving in there. When I went up to take the last garbage bag down, I told my mom and she told me that the landlord has been getting mad about the garage door being left open some nights and told me to go close it. So after I put the trash bag in the can and walked towards the garage, I hear someone shuffling inside. Now, how our garage is arranged is one side belongs to our neighbors and the other side belongs to me and my mother. I listened closely and heard the shuffling coming from our side, deep in the garage. The monitor static just made the situation even more eerie. I go to ask if somebody is inside, but nobody answers. I then go to close the garage door, but as I go to press the button, I hear somebody say, Don't close it. I'm completely thrown off guard, because the neighbors are mute and deaf, so it couldn't possibly be him. I then sped walk away, leaving the garage door open. The question remains, who was that in there, and how did he speak to me if our neighbor only as far as we know, rents out his room to deaf and mute people. Mind you, our garage door can only be open with a code, so there's no way somebody can just open our garage randomly, which would have to mean that the person had to have gotten the code from our neighbor. I think the person inside knew when to hide due to the camera monitors being in the garage, and he can see me on the monitor before I come into view of the garage, and that's when they would duck down out of sight. But I don't know. That was three weeks ago, so there has probably been maybe a full three rotations of roommates for him to have and nothing like this has happened after the fact. So I decided to share this story with you all and see if we can come up with an explanation. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true, creepy encounters. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.